Today, the vice president joining the U.S. Surgeon General at Children's uh, National Hospital to thank staff and announce a new Surgeon General's advisory on a growing threat to the nation's health, health worker burnout. Joining me now uh, to discuss health worker burnout, I want to bring in uh, the president of the American Academy of Physician Associates and a PA herself, uh, Jennifer Orozco. Uh, Jennifer, thanks so much for joining us here. We know that you are so busy, um, but I I'm curious what your thoughts are on this visit with the U.S. Surgeon General, with uh, the Vice President. This is a major issue that we don't talk about enough. Mental health, of course, but specifically for the people who are providing health for others. Yeah, I mean, one thing is for certain, prior to the pandemic, we had a mental health crisis. And now coming out of the pandemic and even with the pandemic continuing, that crisis is continuing and has only worsened. And it's so important um, that we start taking care of not only our patients, but ourselves. And as, as a healthcare provider myself, who has had struggles in the mental health arena, we need to share our stories. And, you know, we're here at our uh, annual conference this week, the American Academy of Physician Associates, and we've had this focus on mental health and what we've been through for the last two years as PAs. And we've been lucky to speak to some really well-renowned leaders in this area that have struggled with mental health, Jane Pauley, Simone Biles, and we just this week launched, um, and in fact today, uh, announced our partnership with the Indianapolis Colts and what they've done with kicking the stigma uh, in the NFL and how we can utilize that as healthcare providers to help provide mental health first aid to all of our patients and our healthcare workers across the country. Right, I mean, everyone was paying attention uh, with Simone Biles and her struggles as she was going through the Olympics and she was very outspoken about that. You've been able to do that in your own industry. You kind of said that, um, there for a moment. I, I'm curious if, if you could go ahead and share your story. You've been very bold about uh, mental health in your industry and helping others. Give us a little glimpse into that. Sure. You know, I am a director of advanced practice in Chicago, and I'm responsible for uh, 400 uh, PAs and nurse practitioners across the system. During COVID at Rush University Medical Center, uh, I was in charge of all the physicians and the PAs and the nurse practitioners in the system and putting them on the front lines. And, you know, as a, as a PA, as a healthcare provider, I really wanted to do that myself. We, we all answered that call. And I was asked by the leadership to say no, help, help coordinate that. And instead had to send all of my colleagues and my friends to the front lines. And I told this story and shared this story about one that impacted me. And I, I, I took a young, um, uh, a, a young PA and who had just had a baby and came back from maternity leave. And I had to send her to the ICU to take care of COVID patients. And she left her baby at home and moved into a hotel. And that as a mother of three, uh, a single mother of three that had a tremendous impact and, and we just cried. And, and that happened every day to all of us um, in, in healthcare. And it, it really affected me tremendously in a, in a way that I never expected. And it, it caused me to pause um, and say, I'm not okay. <laughs> and I, I, I had people all around me who weren't okay either. And I thought, well, maybe if I shared my story, it would cause other to, others to share their story. And that's exactly what it's done. And um, that's exactly what our partnership with, with the Colts has done. And it, people reached out to me after I shared my story. I, I had, as you noted, I had written about it. And I had colleagues that I would have never expected um, in the healthcare space that said, thank you so much for sharing that. Um, it's scary sometimes in, in medicine. We have a lot of fear that we will lose our jobs or our license if, if we share uh, our challenges with mental health. But we have to start saying it's okay to not be okay and really destigmatize all of the negativity around mental health. Um, so that we can take care of ourselves and our families and our patients better. And that's exactly what our campaign, our partnership, um, and this training of the train the trainer uh, will get to. And, and, and the hope is, is that we will be able to spread this because we just don't have enough healthcare providers. It's a national shortage. 
Um, and, and there's a, a, a tremendous shortage of physicians and nurses across this country. We have 150,000 PAs who are trained in every aspect of medicine. And the hope is if we train them to train everybody else, that we can start taking care of each other um, and stop all that are, who are suffering. Well, not to get political on this, but with the Biden administration talking about it, um, I, I'm curious from your point of view, you're saying it is staffing shortages. With this advisory, is this going to be enough? They're also investing in um, young people who want to go into the medical field. I think $200 million going into future uh, physicians and nurses and everything along those lines. Do you think when things get back to capacity here, when you guys get fully staffed up, is that going to be enough? You know, I, I don't think there's such a thing as fully staffed in medicine. <laughs> I've worked in medicine 20 years and, and there's always a, a shortage going on. And I think it really is up to us to be innovative. Hmm. And how do we take what we have? Um, I, I do think what has been proposed and, and dollars and training and all of that is so important and that will make a tremendous difference. But I think we also have to start thinking about what is it that we have and how can we be innovative in, in healthcare to transform health? Uh, we have, uh, if, for instance, as I'm a PA, and so we have a 150,000 PAs, but there are a lot of laws and regulations and administrative burden in this country that prevent them from actually practicing the way that they're supposed to and that they're trained to do. And we really have to start to think about how do we deliver health care? We have all different types of healthcare workers, not just PAs, whether that's respiratory therapy or nursing, all of our physician partners, everybody is collaborative in healthcare. So how do we deliver that team-based care that the Surgeon General talked about and the administration talked about in the most efficient and effective manner? Because we'll never be able to train anybody fast enough to keep up with the demand. Right now, 93 million Americans in this country do not have access to primary care. And we have so many untapped resources that we have to enable and empower to deliver health care, especially in our underserved and our impoverished areas that don't have access. And that's really, that's where PAs were founded. Um, and, and there's so many things that we can do. And this, I think, is just one step in how we can get there. Well, you work directly with PAs, uh, formerly physician assistants, but now known as physician associates because you guys have so much on your plate. And I think I, I read this earlier that now there's a shortage of physicians in general. So you guys are stepping into a lot of the roles that physicians formerly had. Across the board though, with all medical workers, PAs, nurses, is it kind of the same thought process? Uh, is, is everyone burnt out at this point? And is there optimism? Yeah, you know, I, I think there's I think there's a little bit of both. We had burnout um, in healthcare long before the pandemic, hmm. but I think one of the 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 studies and and um, that we've seen is scary. Um, over half of all healthcare workers and PAs are experiencing burnout and wow. severe symptoms of burnout, anxiety, depression. Um, and how can we expect these individuals to take care of patients? Sure. And not only that, when they have so little. And so, you know, it, it really is staggering the numbers and the concern that we have for healthcare workers. And, and I think there was a statistic not too long ago um, that just came out about the shortage of 325,000 nurses that are gonna be on shortage. So you combine that with the physician shortage and all of the other healthcare shortages that we have, and we have to think about access and how do we tap into what we have, create new partnerships. I think our new partnership with the Colts is, is one step into this with a real focus on mental health. I was saying earlier today in, a, in another press briefing that um, we all know someone with a mental health issue and, and we have to just say, how are you? How are you doing today? And not only for our patients, um, but for all healthcare workers. And, and so reach out to them, say, how are you? How are you doing? What can I do? Uh, you know, you don't have to know how to help them necessarily, but just talk to them. We've been isolated for so long and, and just reaching out and moving forward. That's what this mental health aid first aid training that we're going to do will do and you know we're starting in indiana and we're going to reach 2,000 people and and the hope is that with the help 
of, of the Colts and the AAPA, that this is, we're the first two organizations from, a, from an NFL perspective and the first healthcare organization to really do this type of partnership. Hmm. And we want to be able to inspire everybody to do this and to, and to move forward. Yeah, that's really cool. Um, if you could have some sort of aspiration for what the healthcare industry would look like in a year, in two years, what would that be? I would say it's all of us functioning collaboratively in this team-based environment and every single person being able to work uh, to the top of their education and their license. Um, it really is an untapped resource. We have so many outdated uh, laws, regulations, and burdens. And I know this admin administration, as well as the previous administration, really focused on, we have to start removing these barriers. Mm -hmm. We did it during COVID. We had executive orders that removed all the restrictions on healthcare providers, because that's what we needed to do. And we need to make those, those uh, barriers and removal of those barriers permanent. It was the only way, we can't only act in a crisis. We have to do that now because we are in a state of healthcare crisis. We're in a mental health crisis. We're in a workforce uh, shortage crisis in healthcare. We're in a crisis in, in underserved and rural areas. We have chronic um, disease states in this country, obesity, diabetes, high blood pressure. PAs are trained in every single one of these aspects in every medicine and surgical specialty. And we partner with physicians and other healthcare providers, nursing, to, to deliver this care. And we, we have to start doing it better. It's the only way forward. We have to take care of our healthcare workforce because we won't have one if we don't change something. And this week, all this week with my colleagues, it's been so inspiring. There are uh, PAs here that are doing innovative um, healthcare delivery across the country. And we're sharing those stories and we were talking about how we're not okay, but we're really excited for the future because we know that if we do this together in, the, in this partnership, in this collaborative manner, that we will be okay. Yeah, and especially with the community support, uh, I wanna go into the hospital and have people who are there who aren't burnt out and running on uh, zero sleep, negative sleep. And I know that's what a lot of people are probably thinking right now. So we are thinking about you healthcare workers and, and uh, we want the best for you. Thank you for everything that Thank you've you. done. <laughs> Thank you. Um, Jennifer Orozco, uh, president of AAPA, any last thoughts? You know, I think all I want is for people to share their stories know that mental health is important. It's okay to not be okay. We're, we are PAs and we're one healthcare provider, but we're here to help, you know, help everyone feel better, look better, be together. And really we can do this collaboratively to move our healthcare system forward into the future. And I hope all of you are well, stay well, and uh, we wish you the best. Thank you so much. Uh, we will talk Thank to you. you soon. We wish you the best with uh, all of your initiatives that you guys are taking. Thank you.